We are going to show you 10 small tips to use the guillotine at its best. This is a wooden molding covered with a sheet of aluminium. If I cut it like I'd cut the frames normally, I get this terrible result. I now do the cut again whilst putting a strip of carton behind the molding. You can see that the cut, like this, turns out perfect. Do the same for mouldings which are made of a very soft wood, like this one. If the blades aren't well sharpened, then the corner of the moulding remains ragged. To have a perfect corner, you have to put behind the moulding a strip of carton. To get hexagonal, octagonal shapes, etc., you have to rotate the supporting sides in certain points indicated here. Number 5 is needed to set the cut for pentagonal frames, number 6 for hexagonal frames, number 8 for octagonal frames. I now want to cut the pieces to obtain an octagonal frame. I start by rotating the right supporting side to the position number 8. I do the same with the left side. At this point I cut the moulding. This is the result. As you can see, the cut is not perfect. To have a perfect cut, I have to put a carton strip behind the moulding. This way the cut will be perfect. I continue by cutting all the 8 pieces. Flat frames like this one can also be cut on the back. The advantage is that you don't have to use the supporting bars. Let's see for example how to cut a reverse row molding. Another example with a flat frame in walnut wood. The cutting block is lifted to the maximum height, but the molding doesn't pass. What should you do? There's a solution. I move the cutting block backwards and I partially cut the molding. I move the cutting block backwards and lift it to the maximum. I move the molding forwards until it touches the blade. I then execute the cut by removing the part of wood which hadn't been removed by the first cut. Here you can see that the supporting wing doesn't manage to reach the molding. To fix this, put a piece of wood above the wings. A more professional solution is using the appropriate high wings provided by Rinaldi. It happens now and again to have to cut a piece of a frame in the same way to other pieces already cut. I pull the cutting block completely and keep it lowered. I place the already cut piece against the cutting block. I push the stop against the cut piece, fix the measurement and then remove the cutting block. I insert the molding to be cut and place it against the stop. I cut the piece. With this molding I have to make an 8 cm piece. I therefore fix the stop to 8 cm. 
When I move the supporting wing forward, however, I realize that the wing is blocked by the stop. I therefore move the stop and insert another piece of wood. Framers, who often have very small frames, would find it very convenient to sew the tip of the stop. It's possible to partially remove the problem of crooked mouldings. I make the first cut by pushing strongly next to the blade. Also for the cut of the other extremity, I push the moulding strongly against the blade, without pushing the other side where there's the whole moulding. When I then cut the other pieces of the frame by still using the crooked moulding, I'll have to prepare the cut again, which I had obtained by the previous cut. For every cut, I have to push the moulding strongly against the blade. This doesn't remove the problem completely, but it reduces it greatly. When the pedal returns automatically to its initial position, it makes an annoying metallic sound. To reduce this sound, you have to fix some felt between the bar and the stop of the bar. You have the same problem when the pedal goes down. You can also place some small pieces of felt underneath the pedal. Another alternative is to use the special rubber silencers provided by Rinalding.